Gather round. It's time for your real estate chalk talk with the Hitner Group. Listen closely as your coaches discuss the culture, the economy, and the political scene, and how it affects your home and your real estate investments. Real Estate Chalk Talk is where you learn the science of buying and selling real estate and the art of living in your home. Your education begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey there, welcome to the program. This is your Real Estate Chalk Talk from the Hitner Group. 612-627-8000, that's the phone number to call. 612-627-8000, give us a ring-a-ling-a-ling. We'd be happy to have a chat with you about your real estate needs. And of course, that call is all with no cost and absolutely no obligation. Real Estate Chalk Talk, hitnergroup.com. That's the big website to go to. That's the one that everybody likes to see. It's got all the houses for sale on it. And you can mm-hmm. set up your saved searches. Got a wonderful little blog post on there. You can read all about it. Hitnergroup.com. First segment of the big program. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. How are you? So, real estate roundup. What do we got going on? Stable market. Oh, it's a stable market. Everything's the same as last week. 6,560 homes on the market in the seven county metropolitan area last week. Week it was uh, 6,500. I mean, it's the same. <laughs> Nothing sold. Nothing sold. <laughs> <laughs> um, 4,400 was what was on the market uh, in, in the January 1st. So we're up, you know, 31, per, 31% since the first of the year. That's pretty typical. 6,700 is what was on the market a year ago, however. Uh, so it's about the same, 3% off. You go back another year from there, and it's we're about 6% down. You go back to 2019 pre-pandemic. We're always trying to get back to pre, you know, pre-pandemic. I don't know if we ever will. We're 45 percent fewer homes on the market than we were before the pandemic. So hmm. that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Even more from 2018, we're about half as many houses on the market, and that's about what we need to do. Is we need to get about twice as many homes back on the market before things stabilize and prices stop appreciating because they are still going up even with these extraordinary interest rates prices on homes still go up but you're seeing a lot of price decreases all the time right well now, i think right? that probably when that, people you know put them on the market they're coming out a little bit better yeah yeah they're starting to come on a little bit better but for a while there in the midsummer people were out over their skis a lot on yeah. on some of that pricing okay. still think put a ramp on the market <clears throat> uh in lakeville and i mean frankly if this was prior to the interest rates going down, mm-hmm. we probably could have gotten, you know, mid to high fives and it's on low fives right now. Yeah. And, you know, activity is not like insane. Right. I am getting a lot of calls from people, a lot, maybe handful, um, asking if the loan is assumable. Interesting. Um, yep. You know, questioning whether they can just kind of qualify for the mortgage that's there and assume the mortgage. Can they do that, Calvin? Not on conventional, but FHA and VA you can. And but you still have to qualify. Yep, and still have to, to jump through some hoops. I don't know. Oh, definitely. That they necessarily want to. Mm-hmm. Um, now all those FHA buyers that the real estate community kicked to the curb over the last few years. Uh, yeah. Shoot. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So then, what? What do you mean that they don't necessarily want to? Well, the mortgage company certainly doesn't want to re- uh, have it assumed. They want you to pay it off and take out a new loan. Oh, the mortgage company. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, investors. They want the they want that big interest rate that Calvin's getting on all these new loans oh, that come out to high interest All right rates. in your pocket, right? The high, oh, yeah. The margins are extraordinary. Margins you pended are listings this week, 844, up just a tad from last week. It was 805. Um, you know, pretty, but pretty much it's in the 800s. 800, 800, 800. It's, it's kind of rolling all down. Just as stable as can be. Uh, new sales, sales out of close, same thing, 800. So you got about what's coming on is what's going off. It's just kind of churning on through. Hmm. Read another article this week. They were talking about the high number of cancellations. There's, there's certain, you're starting to hear that a lot now, the high number of cancellations. Builders are becoming very concerned about it because they're in the middle of their build cycle, and all of a sudden their client, who they're building a home yep. for, by the end of the when they're, okay, you know, we can set the closing date for... Yeah, let's lock that interest rate Lock now. that interest rate in, the people find out, because they haven't been staying on top of it. They find out that they can no longer afford the house. What what happens in a case like that, Kelvin? 
they can't buy the house. So there's no adjusting, <laughs> no fancy schmancy, nothing you can well, do? you add a co-bar where you find some a non-occupying co-bar to come on to try to give you some strength. You still have to pay the mortgage, yep. though. I mean, the rates, the, reality. The, the, the payment's the payment, you know. So many times. And I, maybe what you should do is do a buy-down. Like, we're, we'll talk about the fourth segment. We're doing a one-zero buy-down for free right now just so we can start one point under. You know? So if someone was in for, say they're coming in, okay, well, we're going to put 20% down on this new build, mm -hmm. and and uh, and now the rates have jumped up a point and a half since they started construction. Mm -hmm. yep. Can they re kind of redo that loan then? Say, oh, maybe we should go 5% down or 10% down, does, yep. and, then, and then buy the rate down? Does that make sense to do well, that? Well, you might not buy the rate down, but you might do a buy down, you know, Temp instead. Temporary so, temporary. What's the difference? Uh, lower payment. Uh, you're you're gonna. It's gonna take way too much money to get that rate that low. Permanently. Permanently. Lot. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna do the temporary and and then uh, pray, you just have to and still pray that sure the rates still, come down. Yeah, they'll come down. We're, but you still have to on, qualify for the higher rate, don't you? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Most people. Yeah. And if they don't, then you add a non-occupying co-bar and you solve it that way. So. Wow. But it but it is a problem. So we're running into it as well. So there's an article this week. Target is closing stores due to increase in theft. So they're closing like seven stores. And mm -hmm. all the stores, all the store closings are in. Over the country or yeah, locally? In the country. Okay. All the store a lot closings. Of Target stores. I know there are. But the, but the point of it is they're closing stores in all the blue. Not all the blue. It, they're all blue. Every store that they're closing is in a, is in a Democratic-run city. So Portland, Seattle big cities okay they're closing their stores because they the theft is just they can't do it which is interesting so i thought hmm, <clears throat> minneapolis is a democratic run city and we got a lot of target stores so what's happening in minneapolis if is that theft of inner city stores translate somehow into real estate because if there's high crime high theft in these cities then wouldn't you think that you would have people that are just like saying, I'm getting the heck out of this city and moving out to the suburbs, fleeing to the suburbs to get away from the crime. And so then I thought to myself, well, how would I demonstrate that? And I said, well, I should be able then to go and look at my MLS statistics. And we know all know that sales are down. If, if my theory is correct, then sales would be down more as a percentage in the core cities than they are in the suburbs. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay. I don't think that will be the case, though. So I looked at it. St. Minneapolis. Minneapolis is down 26.7%. Okay. For what? Name. For sales. Units. 26.7%. They went from 6,987 units to 4,393 on a rolling 12 months average. Okay. Down 26%. St. Paul is down 26.2%. So I'm thinking, oh, so okay. Same. Woodbury. Woodbury is down 20.8%. So there it's like, oh, okay, there's 6% 6, 6 mm -hmm. difference there. And then, uh, but Woodbury is a lot of new construction. So I thought, well, I'm going to just take out the new construction and just see what the decline is in previously owned. <clears throat> and it's 21.7. Hmm. So it's declined more for previously owned because it, because Woodbury is being mitigated. Mm -hmm. It's the number one uh, uh, city in the state right now for building permits for, pulled. So that has that. Egan, you think, oh, Egan, that's probably, they probably didn't go. They probably went up, right? Down 24.3%. Hmm. So down, right. you know, a little bit, 2%, but not to me, not significant. Mm -hmm. And then I look at Eden Prairie down 27 percent okay so they're down more than the core city and the seven county metro as a whole the number is 25 percent so that's kind of like my par so if you're above or below that line right so yep the core cities are above that line they're doing mm -hmm. they're losing more than but not much but not much roseville would probably be the same that would be considered same yeah and 13 yeah. county metro is 25.3 percent yeah so, so it's about the same. Yeah, but you look at like Carver County, Dakota County, 27.2, Carver County, 25.7. Mm -hmm. Just no impact uh, from that standpoint. So I was surprised at that. There is a ton of new construction, though, in the cities, because I'm in Minneapolis and St. Paul quite a bit. 
these new developments they're just gorgeous those new apartments and lofts and luxury apartments and it's really it is more multifamily it is in crazy. that area they're yes. finding places where they can get those multifamily units yeah in. it's amazing and they stack look, them up high look jam really them nice. in there <laughs> jam them in there yeah so yeah the rats breed you know when they get in there close and they start fighting with one there mm. too this is your real estate chalk talk good stuff <laughs> hitting our group a lot of great things to say today about group dot com hitting our group dot com six one two six two seven eight thousand Give us a ring ling ling We'd be happy to chat with you. Like Biden. It's fun. 612-627-8000. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, welcome back to the program. This is your real estate chalk talk with the Hitner Group. Hitnergroup.com. H-I-T-T-N-E-R group.com. 612-627-8000. That's 612-627-8000. The golden number, the hotline that you all need to call if you're thinking about buying or selling real estate or just want to consult a little bit on what you may do to prepare your home for sale maybe you're thinking next year or the year after that there's a lot of things that you can be doing slowly gradually i was walking down the hallway in the mansion uh this week and looking around thinking man if i was going to put this hog on the market next you know like quick i got a lot of work to do on this thing get the stager in there just for the decluttering well, I would have to do that. Well, I'd have to get rid of my wife to declutter thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's just, you know, things go. You live in a, you live in a property, mm-hmm. and you just you live there. You raise your family there. You live there. People in and out. We have a ton of people in and out of the house all the time. I'm looking at the kitchen cabinets at uh, 4:30 in the morning as I'm staring at the wall, and I was like, man, these things are beat. Hmm. You know, these things are beat. You need to sand them and restain them or paint them or something. And so if I'm in um, putting on my buyer hat and my buyer walking through my house, mm-hmm. with, I'd have to have a, a legal pad, you know, fine-lined mm. <clears throat> to make all the notes. Yeah, on, picking apart everything that, picking could, apart, that could be done. That could be and should be done if you're going to put a property on the market and expect the, a premium price for it or, or a full mm-hmm. price for it. Because if you don't have things dialed in pretty good, um, you know, you're going to get passed over. Mm-hmm. really is what it is unless there's something really unique about the property yeah and i think when the market shifts like this I mean, we talk about it a lot about preparing listings for sale in any given market having the mark having the house prepared for sale is going to get you the most money even a couple of years ago 2021 t- late 2020 uh, you still wanted to make sure the house was dialed in that's where you got your 25 30 offers on the right. property um, but even now, more than ever, people are obviously being a lot more discerning about what they're going to spend their money mo- money on, mm-hmm. how they're going to spend their money on a monthly basis, and what that property is going to look like. It already costs a lot to get into a home. Mm-hmm. Affordability is in a tough spot right now. So on top of that, also to pay expensive contractors to fix the property up, um, you want to make sure that the house is dialed in. We actually have a great program um, with Coldwell Banker in our relationship with the company to... Uh, put up up to three up to four percent mm-hmm. of the overall list price of the house. So if you have a house for that'd be your budget. Mm-hmm. Yes, if mm-hmm. you have a three hundred thousand dollar house, uh, then we can put up twelve thousand dollars of our own money to help with the contractors getting the house dialed in and ready to go. Um, I just did that on the recent Lakeville listing that I put on the market. It's a Rambler style home. Unfortunately, in their situation, they had a little problem in the basement. They had a sump pump failure. Mm-hmm. and uh, it ruined some carpet um, and a uh, little bit of drywall on the bottom. The insurance that they had on the property had a cap on water backup, mm-hmm. and so they only had enough to cover the cleanup. So okay. removal of the carpet, drying everything out properly, and making sure that there is no you know mold or anything in the home. Um, but it didn't have enough money left over to repair the damage that was caused. Mm. Um, because these, you take a look at your insurance policies if you're listening. Uh, I just mm-hmm. looked at mine um, the other day, and mine's fifty thousand. Uh, so if I had a sump pump failure in my home, or if there was some sort of sewer backup or something, my cap's fifty grand. Um, so you know, I encourage you to look at your your homeowner's insurance policies. But the program that we have at Cole Banker, it's fantastic. Um, even in estate situations, divorce situations, whatever whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a home that needs some of that work, like you're talking about, we can help with that, get the ball rolling. So. We do quite a bit of probate and divorce work, and we use that program actually a lot. It works really well because you got people who are fighting with one another. Or <clears throat> really, you have, a lot of times with probate especially, the the, uh, the the errors are out of state. 
And so mm-hmm. you've got this nice little house sitting in the, you know, in the metropolitan area somewhere. And with just a little bit of touch in here and there, you could really get more for the house for the for the estate. Well, yeah, the program's great because it does help with the financial piece yeah. of it. But even if you have money, mm-hmm. it makes it far more convenient. So right. if you do have right. like a cousin, you know, let's just say it's a you know three kids, one's in Wisconsin, one's in Seattle, and one's in California, and mom dies and she was yep. the last one there and she's got a house in white bear lake yeah well it, instead of you know him sending money to the contractor right. and all it just comes right off the settlement statement so at easy. closing um coldwell banker and hitner group we'll cover that in advance so right. the contractors get paid they're done and then we just reimburse the money at closing confident in the numbers that we put forth that we're going to sell your house for and um then at the end, it's an easy accounting, and, and it comes right off the bottom line, and then everybody gets their money. That's and, of course, we use our preferred and recommended vendors that we've used and trusted, know, and get them certified to be involved in that program. It works really well. I want to talk a little bit about the power of referral and how important that is because when I'm walking down my house inside, I'm looking at, well, I can have Mike come over and check that out, you know, because Mike is, Sandvig has been our painter and, you know, has done hundreds of projects for us. And, uh, you know, I have, I'll have uh, the designer come over and Melissa come over and, you know, I for sure would have her come over and and uh, I can buy stuff off the mannequin, you know, but to put it together myself is a little bit uh, problematic. Mm-hmm. Um, so have her kind of tell us what, what we would need to do and uh, in terms of arranging all those, <clears throat> all those things are available to you when you work with our team. And I was really pointed out to me about the referral part of it this morning as I was picking Kelvin up from the car shop as he's taking his Audi and <clears throat> again, yet again, for another repair job. And it's in the like the most inconvenient place in the United States of America. That's the place that he picked to have his car repaired. Mm-hmm. And so as I'm sitting there in the parking lot waiting for him because he's a half hour late like always. So I'm sitting there waiting. Ten, ten minutes. <clears throat> and uh, I said... Road they would have to pay me to come here to get my car fixed. There's, you drive by three, four hundred auto repair shops mm-hmm. to get to this. Why on earth did you choose this one? And what did you tell me? Referred. Referred. Lindsay's brother. So it was right. Lindsay's brother. He does a good job. He trusts them, priced fairly. And that's what their whole referral mm-hmm. thing is all about. And yeah, that's why. You're not going to walk out of there, spend another. Five thousand dollars you didn't intend to exactly. Correct. Yep. Right. As they try to upsell you on everything. You think at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. As far as I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's. Yeah, it's the referral. I'm comfortable business. with you, so I'm yep. okay spending the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It puts his yeah. arm on his shoulder. Thanks a lot. I'll tell Lindsay you were in. Yeah. <laughs> as he, She'd be really happy. As he builds it. So, But that is the power of the referral. Yep. It's the comfort of knowing that someone that you know mm-hmm. and trust has also used that service. Yep. And they got a good result. Mm-hmm. And so it's better than, you know, working with somebody. And if there's a problem, cold. you know that you can, I mean, yeah, no different than our business. That they, it's you exactly know somebody, like our somebody's going to be, somebody's going to be at the table helping you through this stuff. Right. So that has been, that has done this, you know, like, you know, we refer you, we've done business with you, Calvin. We know that the, that the file is going to get mm-hmm. managed correctly yep. and properly, close on time, funded the way you said it was going to be funded. So that's a comfort to us mm-hmm. because we know that we're not going to have bad feelings at the table because the, the something, the, was something passed, went yep. sideways and the thing got changed. So mm-hmm. that is the power of the referral. And that was just, I knew, I've known that, you know, for our whole career. It's true with, with just about everything. Um but I was just reminded of it this morning as I'm sitting in uh, downtown Minneapolis, scratching my head, wondering how you ever found this joint. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's been on that corner. It's been on that corner since 19, like 36. It's a family deal, and it's gone from generation to generation to generation. Just right there on the corner, they just fix the neighborhood. You know, they take care of the cars in the neighborhood. You know, Clawson Clawson Car Repair yep. on the corner of Franklin and First Avenue downtown minneapolis there Perfect. you go that's worth a <coughs> discount right there yeah right there free advertising yeah I tell him that you said listen to the show because yeah, that's uh, right he's busy though i mean there's a lot of people in now there mm-hmm. okay so the silver lining and what we'll, we'll pick this up in the next segment here but the silver lining according to glenn glenn kelman who is the ceo of uh of uh was it redfin mm-hmm <coughs> He says the good news is he's happy about the market the way it is. 
because the good news is it can't get any worse. <laughs> That's what he said. Mm. It can't get any worse. Yep. So we're at the bottom. Uh, total unit sales in the United States runs about 6 million sales a year. We're at 4 million sales, you know, annualized sales is about what we're going to hit. It's never been below, since they've been recording it, it's never been below 4 million. So his theory is it can't get any worse. Hmm. All we got is just sunshine and roses ahead. You know, it was just blue skies. That's yep. what we got to look forward <laughs> Thank to. Thank goodness. <clears throat> so it's all about just managing your costs, managing your expectations. Um, everybody's got to move. Everyone is going to move. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. And what are the circumstances that prompts that mm -hmm. need to move? You know, yeah. you know we just got to get reasonable on rates again. Then we'll be fine. Reasonable on rates again and increased inventory because we've got the double yeah. whammy of high cost of acquisition mm -hmm. and high prices. And although the prices are kind of moderating now, the increases are moderating, mm -hmm. uh, but they are historical highs. And we have historical high prices and everywhere yep. in the country except on the West Coast, their, their prices are not quite as high as the rest of the country. Midwest is doing very well. Uh, this is your real estate chalk talk, hitnergroup.com, H-I-T-T-N-E-R group.com, hitnergroup.com, 612-627-8000. 612-627-8000. Give us a ring -a ling Be happy to have a chat with you. In fact, look forward to it. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is your real estate chalk talk with the Hitner Group, H-I-T-T-N-E-R group.com, Hitner group.com, all one word, 612-627-8000. That's 612-627-8000. That's the number you see on all the signs around town, both of them. That are on houses for sale. <laughs> There's no inventory out there. <laughs> Six one two six two seven eight thousand. It's okay. all over. It's all over. It's, it's all in over. every yard. You know how you get a listing? You know how you get a call? This is a good way to get a call. I'm trying this uh, method because you're trying to get listings, right? Just go jam your temporary sit for sale sign in front of the house. Pick a house you'd like to sell <laughs> and go put the for sale sign in. Step in sign. Do you remember when our <laughs> old assistant uh, installed a sign? On the for wrong one house. of my listings <clears throat> yes. on the wrong house. On the wrong house. It was on an entire street over, and we get just <laughs> this mad call from a homeowner. <laughs> oh my gosh! And you senior imagine? was like, "Well, did you ask them if they just wanted to leave it there? Maybe they wanted <laughs> maybe, to sell. Maybe it was. Maybe it was a god thing. That's a good. You get a call. Sure. Right. That Calvin's Ooh. always complaining. Oh, whoops! Well, sorry about that. Yeah, well, anyhow. Well, anyhow, well, it's there. As long as I got you on the phone. You've been thinking of making a move for an hour or sometime this fall? <laughs> <laughs> we can just leave the sign or drape something over it until right. you're ready. All right. So oh, that's funny. That's with, the, with the environment that we're in, let's face it, it's a high cost. Everything's expensive. Groceries are expensive. Everything's expensive. So people are trying to figure out how to get their costs down, you know, buying uh, off-brand products, you know, store brand products as opposed to national branded products and doing this and going to bulk stations all with real estate. There's lots of, I'm amazed at the creativity of people <clears throat> and companies who are trying to figure a way to make it more affordable. I remember back in the, in the uh, late 80s when uh, rates were at, uh, you know, 15%. Mm -hmm. The solution there was 40-year mortgage. Well, mm -hmm. they had 40 and 50-year mortgages in Japan, so maybe we can do, you know, a 40-year mortgage here, which means that on your first five years of... Uh, of your uh, mortgage life, mm -hmm. you've paid your principal down by a dollar ninety nine cents. Right, right? Mm -hmm. it's just you might but, as well be renting. <clears throat> you might as well be renting, and it got the payment down because there was yep. essentially no principal mm -hmm. payment being made. Yeah, you're just stretching that payment that the payment or the principal payment back over the forty years versus thirty. So right, another and hundred twenty months. Exactly, yeah. pushing it back mm -hmm. to that last hundred twenty. Then you've got. Uh, I started seeing some articles this week about interest-only loans again, IO loans. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very popular for a long time, interest-only. I priced one out this week for somebody to just see the difference in the payment. And on a, on a like 400, the loan amount was about 450, and it changed the payment by about four, 400, just under 500 bucks a month. Okay. And there was interest-only. Mm -hmm. You pay for the, you pay for it, right? You're but paying it's for the only. use of the money. Yeah. Yep. And then the thought process is what? And when yeah, the rates come the, down, you'll yep. refinance. Then you refinance them into a long-term solution because you, your interest only is a five-year, seven-year. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, so it's about the same rate, you know, about the same rate where where rates are right now, but 
your interest only. Now, is it possible to do a buy down on an interest only? Yep, it you is. can. Yep, we can go up to two points under. Okay, <clears throat> so that could be very attractive mm -hmm. uh, to somebody, especially yep. if you're if you're uh, like you move a lot. Mm -hmm. If you're military or, yep. or a, a job where you're in for a few years and then mm -hmm. you're out, that could be a very attractive yep. option and get you in at a very attractive rate. I mean, you're two it's points either. down. I mean, yep. Yep, you can, it's a it's a good it's a good option. It's just I think it's better again. for more long term solutions though. I mean, when you're looking mm -hmm. out long term, like the guy that moves around a lot, mm -hmm. um, even right now, if I have somebody that bought a house a couple years ago, you know, things were pretty crazy in the market, mm -hmm. and now they want to move right now. Right, it's like move. they haven't really seen a lot of movement in right. terms of mm -hmm. like equity position, a lot of right. appreciation okay. when right. you're talking about the overall cost of buying and selling real estate. So. You'd, pr you'd, you'd probably be lucky if you've absorbed the premium that you paid on the house. Right. So there was a bit of a premium, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then you have more of a re reality situation where you're at, plus uh -huh. the overall cost of buying and selling the, the piece of property. Yep. I would be careful on somebody that, like, moves around a bunch and really, mm -hmm. you know, suggesting hard on an interest-only situation. Yeah. I'd mm -hmm. rather be more conservative on, like, oh, let's drop mm -hmm. the sales price, maybe 50000 or something, and work on the payment that way. Um Meaning that's your budget. It should mm -hmm. be a little bit lighter. I mean, everybody's budget is. Yep. You know, sure. when you're out shopping for a house and you're like, oh, 600000 is where it's at. You know, well, it could have been 800 a couple mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, right. right now, yep. you know, because of where rates are, they've doubled. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to look at just adjusting the budget, with mo which most people have. So I think the pricing, too, I mean, for these entry-level homes, I mean, I don't think it's going to significantly change, right? I mean, I don't it's not going to so. go split level homes in, in XYZ suburb or, you know, your, your, fifties uh, Rambler in, in XYZ, you know, first tier, mm -hmm. first ring suburb, Roseville, Richfield, Bloomington, Golden you Valley. know, Golden Valley, <clears throat> Golden, Valley Golden Valley is expensive. Frankly, yeah, it but, is. It's a nice suburb. You know, for those properties to be 330 <clears throat> to 380 easy, mm -hmm. um, 330 would be a low end, you know, 380, it's probably gussied up a little bit. Mm hmm and even into the 400s low right. if they're really nice. Right. Mm -hmm. And then your split level homes being like 375 to 450 depending on the properties. Um <laughs> you know, to buy a home like that median sales price basically in the Twin Cities, you got to bring in, you know, About six 20. figures. Yeah. Um to to make it really make sense. And then you're even at that, you're still you know, living pretty conservatively, meaning you don't have a seven hundred dollar a month car payment that you're paying for right. times right. two um you know your your kids aren't going to private school uh you're not eating out every day or taking lavish vacations and that's just bare bones mm -hmm. to get yep. you in the other thing that people are doing uh and we've been doing this for a very long time as well it's just that now it's going to start i think being asked more is the government the 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 bond programs mm -hmm. different bond programs mahapa uh, they're looking at city programs uh, you know, because a lot of cities have money set aside because they've got particular neighborhoods that they want to uh, help people get into and so forth and so on. But aren't they always, they're always capped at some kind of a number. Figure, it's always, uh, it's typically 80% of AMI, okay. your area median income. So you're talking high uh, $80,000, $90,000 is probably where you have to be income wise. Okay. In order uh, to qualify. A larger, yeah. A larger family would be able to get over a hundred grand. Okay. You know, but it, there are a ton of programs. We have a great, our great, our website's wonderful on finding those programs. You just put in the location. It brings up every program that's available. And then we just look, see if any, if you fit in the box, the whole thing is it's fitting in that box, mm -hmm. right? You make too much money. The home is worth too much or not enough. And you know, credit scores matter, credit scores matter, everything matters. Okay. So it's, it, you got to fit in the box, but there are there are a lot of programs out there right now. And, you know, we just rolled out um, FHA. They, they're they coming out with a 0% down program. We have a 1% down now in FHA program as well. So if people want to get into a home, they can get into a home. But it's just the rate. It's just. I think it's the budget, the it's monthly a, it's budget, budget part of look it. At, mm -hmm. look, because so, it's, not, it's not always like, oh, I can't come up with twelve grand for the down payment. Right. A lot of times people have the down payment. It's right. just like, God, Cause the you're monthly going, payment's $3,800 or $3,500. you, you got to do the math on this deal, right? Minimum down, mm -hmm. which is where all these people are at. You can't make over this much, and now rates are 8%. Right. So now, like, you don't qualify. Right. So put in your income, put in the current interest rate, right? And then your home has to be in this range. It just won't work. You're not. 
numbers but you got have a but, calculator, but online calculator. It. They can plug their numbers in. Oh, and it's super. Yeah, just call me. It's yeah, really. That's the easiest. It's really good, you know. So we have a lot of programs. Another thing that's been around for a while that, that uh, you know, when rates are at 3.5%, you don't pay any attention to these programs. Mm-hmm. There's some religious affiliation programs where where the the lending institution actually takes an equity position in the property. And they've been around for a long time because they're because of their religion. They can't pay interest and and uh, or, or be paid interest, and so then they take it out as an equity share. <clears throat> well, now there's programs out there that was just approved this week by Fan- Freddie and Fanny, mm-hmm. uh, shared equity programs where actually you can sell some of the equity in your house, and and another company can buy that equity and own it. And ride the appreciation wave of that property, mm-hmm. and trade it, you know, on like like any other asset, and you can buy that asset back if you choose to at at a later date. So you can use that, mm-hmm. and that uh, was always not. It was been around for a while. It was at a hundred percent of the of the uh, of the minimum whatever the wage cap was. Yep. They made that now. It's two hundred percent. Hmm. So they've really opened it up. They're trying, you know, open it up and make that available. Whether that'll take off or not, I don't know if I like the idea of, of a corporation owning owning part of the equity in your home. Twenty percent of the equity in my home. I now, is there restrictions on that? That'd be interesting to deep dive. See All what the boxes to fit in on that deal. Right. Just to kind of see whether or not you, I I would never let somebody else have equity in well, my Well, I wouldn't either. Would but at the same point, when you borrow, when you take a second mortgage out and a first mortgage out. They they have a claim on the equity in that house. Right. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, they they already have their mm. their hooks into the house. So yep. this is just a different way to do it, where mm. there is no interest, there is no payment, and they're gambling that the house is going to appreciate. It's like the silent second. It is like a silent second, and they're gambling that the home is going to appreciate. I'm like it's like the insurance company. They got better actuaries than I do, so I'm gambling that. They probably know more about it than I do. And Mm. if they think that the market's going to go up and they're going to profit from this, then it's probably not a bad bet Mm. uh, all the way around. Creative ways that people are trying to figure out how to make it more affordable.